I'll go out and help him find the disc if you like, sir. I'm dressed for it. Didn't Mark tell you to stay here? Yes, he did, sir. Well, just be patient then, Peter. Look, the light. I hope he's found it. Did you find it, Mark? Doctor, what were you doing out there? Still so hard for explanations. I came for help. Bannerman's out there. He's in trouble. What's happened? I don't know. I think he's dead. Mark! Both of you get out there as quickly as you can and bring him in. Now contact the sick bay and tell them it's been an accident on the gear. Yes, sir. And tell them to bring up the oxygen tent and have it ready for immediate use. Yes, sir. Captain, they're coming back now. Was he all right? We don't know yet. We can get his tanks off and get him up from the stretcher. Oh, um. Uh. What happened up there? He was attacked. Attacked? Yes. Someone else was out there. Who? I don't know. I bet I do. It was you. Don't be stupid. Would I have come to fetch help if I'd attacked him? You weren't thinking about getting help when you came in here, but when you saw us, you realized that we knew Mark was out there, so you had to tell us. That's not true. I did not attack him. Do you expect us to believe that after telling Janet you didn't know how to use an aqualung? He's telling the truth. What? Someone else. Someone else was out there. Where is he? What's happened to him? He just disappeared. Then whoever it is not still be out there. That's right. We've been here all the time. No one else has come through that hatch. No, you're forgetting the hatch into the submarine pen, Peter. He could use that one. Oh, what are we waiting for? Come on. Doctor, you'll see about transferring Vanderman to the sick bay. No need for that, sir. He'll be all right in a few minutes. Very good. We'll stay here with him and report anybody coming in off the gear. Sir. Dr. Gerard, you'd better go to your quarters and remain there until I send for you. I shall want some explanations. Very well, Captain. Feeling better? Oh, yes. Yes, much better, thank you. Good. He grabbed your air supply line. That's right, yes. Hey, we're lucky. If he'd held on a bit longer, it would have been a different story. Oh, yes. I suppose it would. It's still wet, sir. Although we're too late and Mark's attack is going to be inside a gear. Well, hardly safe, Janet. There's a mask and aqua to be disposed of. Do you think you... say nothing of an underwater suit. Do you think you'll try and sneak them back into Dr. Kerr's laboratory, sir? No, that would really be sticking his neck out. But he'll have to get rid of them. And hide them. Yes. And the sooner we find them, the better. Professor Subaya. Mr. Benneman, I hardly expected to find you here. Oh? Who did you expect to find? Dr. Carey? I suppose so. Though to tell you the truth, I'm not sure it could have been anyone. Except me. Really, Mr. Benneman, it's all perfectly simple. I was uh, working in my office, you see, and decided to stretch my legs. And then as I was walking down the corridor, I saw a light in here and decided to find out who it was. You're working very late, Professor. With all this trouble, Mr. Bannerman, I have to. Did you see anyone on your travels? No. Did you hear anything? No, nothing distracts me when I'm working. Why do you ask? Oh, just curiosity. You've been out on the gear? Yes. 
I was stretching my legs, too. Hello, Peter. Good evening. There seem to be more people stretching their legs, Mr. Bannerman. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to my reports. I have to be at the drilling centre first thing in the morning. Good night. What was he doing here, Mark? Oh, just talking. Sorry, Mark, we were too late. Whoever attacked you out in the gear was already back in Nigeria. Ah, oh, that's a pity. Well, we're looking for the mask and aquila. The first thing your attacker would do would be to hide them. Yes, and the second thing would be to establish an alibi. Yes. Do you feel up to helping us, Mark? Yes, come on, I feel fine now. Good, we'll start with Professor Gordon's laboratory. Right, go ahead. There seem to be anything very much here, Captain. No, there doesn't. What's in the cupboard, sir? That's used for storing electronic equipment. Which lock, sir? I should be very angry if it weren't. That equipment's very valuable. Look! It's wet! I think we'd better take a look inside, Captain. Yes. Now, there are two keys to that cupboard. Professor Gordon has one, the other's kept in master control. I'll go and fetch them, sir. Peter, while you're there, tell the duty engineer to wake up Professor Gordon. I wanted to be here when we open this cupboard. Yes, sir. What do you think, Mark? I don't know. I would like to say, sir. Wouldn't like to say what, Mr. Bannerman? Good morning, gentlemen. You're up very early. What does it meet? What is the matter? We'd like to see inside the equipment cupboard, Professor. As you wish. You got here very quickly. I'd only just sent word to have you waken. I got one from Professor Sabayev. Oh, he didn't waste much time telling you. Just as well, Mr. Bannerman, since I'm responsible for everything in here. Peter, what's happening? Why is everyone running round at this hour? Mark was out in the gear. Someone attacked him. Attacked him? Who? Well, we don't know yet. Whoever it was, go back into a gear through the hatch in the submarine pan. They had to hide uh, an underwater suit and an aqualung. We're still looking for them. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to give these keys to Captain Payne. Yes, of course, please. I've got the keys, Captain. What? What's this? What? How the devil did these get in here? You have no idea, Professor? If I knew, I wouldn't be asking. Well, there are only two keys to that cupboard, Professor. The one you have, and one of these on this key ring. What, which one is it, Captain? Uh, one of those, two. Fine, thank you. I'm afraid you're wrong, Captain. Neither of them fits. What? The key they want is missing. Then anybody could have opened their cupboard. Provided they have the missing key, yes. Why don't you look in the key book? That'll tell you who had the mouth last. Hello, Doctor. Well, everybody seems to be working late tonight. Oh, I was curious. I was reading in my room and I heard a commotion outside. When I looked out, I saw Professor Gordon hurrying off towards his laboratory. I was curious. Yes, that's right, Mark. I had to sign for those keys. So the names of anyone else who had them must be in the book. Yes, I think we'd better take a look at that book, Captain. Yes, I agree. Well, uh, have you quite finished in here? For the time being, Professor. I'm sorry we had to get you up, but as you see, it has served a purpose. It has that. I suppose I can trust you to lock up. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Doctor. That's Professor Gordon never used an aqualung. Yes, when he first came here several months ago, he was curious, so I took him out on the gear with me. I don't think he liked it very much. Oh, why do you say that? Well, he's never asked to come out again. Uh, well, not to my knowledge, anyway. Peter, perhaps you and Jan will take the tanks and the suit back to Dr. Kerr's laboratory. Of course, Doctor. I'll help you. That's all right, Doctor. We can manage. Mark, I think we'd better get a mask control and have a look at that keybook. Right, fine, sir. May I come with you? Yes, of course. Peter, do you think Professor Gordon put these in the cupboard? Well, if he did, he certainly knows how to play the innocent. And with just the right amount of indignation. Well, the last person who signed those keys out, sir, was Professor Subaya. When was that? Yesterday morning, sir. And before him? Well, Miss Slayton had them. Janet. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, that was the day before yesterday, wasn't it? Yes, I sent her for them. Yes, Doctor. Was the missing key on the ring then, Doctor? I don't know. It, it wasn't the one I wanted. Well, did anybody else have? Well, no, sir, not recently. Right, fine, thank you. What now, Mark? Oh, I don't know. Bed, I suppose. Any more questions can wait till morning. Where will you want to stop? There's no doubt about that. My good friend and lifesaver, Dr. Durard.
Come in. Ah, oh, good morning, Captain. Good morning, Mona. Do you mind if I have a word with you? No, of course. What's the trouble? Well, I had an idea about that missing key. Yeah? Well, whoever stole it couldn't have predicted the course of events. I mean, finding me out on the gear, attacking me, and then having to hide the underwater suit. That's true. So it must have been stolen for some other purpose. Such as? Oh, I don't know. All I know is it wasn't stolen simply to hide the suit. Come in. Ah, oh, come in, Doctor, please. Do you want me to go? No, that's all right. Uh, sit down, please, Doctor. Thank you, no, Captain. I prefer to stand. Very well. Now, Doctor, there are a couple of questions I want to answer. I'll do what I can to help. On several occasions, you stated, in front of witnesses, that you never used an aqualung. Yet, in fact, you had. That is true. You also claimed that you've never been out on the gear. Yet, in fact, you had. But that is also true. Why did you make these statements? I was involved in an activity I wanted to keep secret. What was that? I was looking for gold. Looking for what? For this. There's plenty of gold at the bottom of the sea. A gear can boast a modest amount. Not enough to mine commercially, of course. How much do you estimate? Oh, there's between five and ten thousand pounds worth within fairly easy reach. And you were out there looking for this when Mark was attacked? Yes, Captain. Well, I think you were looking for something very much more valuable. That Phoenician disc. I told you I know nothing about that. I'm only interested in gold. I see. Well, of course, this will have to be reported to London. And in the meantime, Doctor, I must forbid you to go out on the gear. Very well, Captain. Just a moment. There's one more question. Who attacked Mark? I don't know. I wish I did. Now, he's laughing at us. He wasn't looking for gold. He buried that disc on the gear and he went out there to find it. He hadn't got it when he came in. No, I know, because I don't think it was there. I think that disc is in the hands of whoever it was who attacked me. And that's why Durab wants to know who it is. Who do you think it was, Mark? Well, it must have been someone who knew his way around the gear well enough to risk going over the side to find the submarine pen hatch. Yes. I can think of only one person who qualifies. Ellen Carey. You can't mean that, Mark. Yes, I do. What is it? Explosion, sir, in Dr. Carey's laboratory. Was she in there? Yes, sir. She still is. <laughs> Yes, sir. She's unconscious at the moment. No apparent fractures, but there's some danger of concussion. Report to me when you've examined her, sir. Well, so lucky to get out of this lot alive. Yes, very lucky. It looks as if the main force of the explosion was in here in the gas storage room. Yes. Accident or sabotage? Well, it, <coughs> if it would sabotage, you know what that does to my theory. You mean about who attacked you? Yeah. Yes, it does make you look a bit silly, doesn't it? Is Dr. Carey all right? We hope so, Janet. Janet, how did you escape this? I'd gone up to the observation tower. Oh, that was a bit of luck. Mark, I'm going you to the sick bay. Do you want to come along? Right, fine. Yes, Captain. Janet, what was this used for? Oh, Dr. Kerr has been doing some experimental work with edible seaweed. She was injecting various compounds into their roots to increase their nutritional value. Hmm. Right. Thank you, Jen. Coming, Mark? Yeah. Bates, no one's to enter this laboratory without a sign passed from me. I have it. I suppose it happened anywhere else which fortunately is reinforced. Well, well, the blast would have blown a hole in the side of the gear. Then we would have really been in trouble. Oh, yes, indeed. How's the mole dig going? It's coming along. We're nearly two and three quarter miles down. Oh, the X-Lair? No, we haven't reached it yet. Well, hello, Captain. Hello, Mark. 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 Hello, M
Peter. Hello, Janet. What's the latest news on Dr. Carey? Oh, she was knocked out by the blast. No broken bones, no concussion. Oh, good. I'm glad. Well, so am I. I hear you had a lucky escape, too. Oh, well, yes, I suppose so. I've gone up to the observation town to collect some data sheets for her. I was on my way back when that happened. I was supposed to go to the lor um, left the notes in the laboratory. That's all right. You can pick them up later. Uh, does Captain Payne know what caused the explosion? Not yet. There is still time. Mark, I made up my mind. I'm going to close down all the work here. I think you'll be making a mistake, sir. Mark, I cannot go on risking people's lives. Dr. Kerry could have been killed, and you know it. But Captain Payne, we don't know yet what caused that explosion. But we do know that the broken drill rod and the wrecked TV camera were acts of sabotage. And I think the person who is responsible for those acts is trying to bring a Gary to a standstill. If you close down now, you'll be playing right into the enemy's hands. And if I don't close down, I'm placing myself in danger. What's so important about Aguirre that someone's deliberately trying to wreck our research program? The Phoenician, the x ray you can call it what you like, but that disc is the key to this mystery. That disc could be papier-mâché, for all you know, Mark. You never tested it, you never even saw it tested. There's no proof that it's of any value whatsoever. And what's more, I've never even seen it. And I'm not going to gamble people's lives against something I know nothing about. I can't do it. Yes, I know, Captain. But I'm sorry, Mark. Is. There's nothing more to be discussed. I'm going to notify London that I'm going to stop all work here until the saboteur has been discovered. I wonder what exploded. A gas leak, perhaps. One of these canisters? Yes, it's possible, but something would have to ignite it. Hello, what's this? Looks like a transistor. Something from a radio. Look around and see if we can find some more. We're not supposed to touch anything, are we? Well, this may be important. Well, why? Well, was there any other electrical equipment in the lab? No, not that I know of. Then how did this get here? Unless it was part of something that was deliberately put here. What sort of thing, Peter? I don't know. A time bomb. Electrical detonator, perhaps. Or put here by the same person who attacked Mark. Yes. And this also gives us another clue to his identity. Not only does he know how to use an aquila, he also knows about electronics. Come in. Yes, sir. Uh, how is the camera going? Oh, I expect I'll be able to get it back into working order before very long. What are you up to, Doctor? Oh, nothing. Uh, Captain Payne suspended me for being out in the gear last night. Was it you who dumped a suit and an aqualung in here? No. Well, what were you doing out there, then? I was looking for this. Gold. You know about it? Uh huh. I've seen it myself when I've been out there. Do you know how to use an aqualung then? Oh, yes. I thought of going out there and collecting some of that stuff for myself, but it doesn't seem to be enough to make it worth my while. Perhaps it's as well I didn't go. I thought it'd be all right. I thought I said. Hello, Doctor. Feeling better? Well, I'm still a little shaky, but I persuaded the doctor to let me come down here. Have you any idea what caused the explosion? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, who had access to the gas storage room? It was kept locked, and I had the key. Was there another key? Yes. It was on the key ring in master control. That's the one that was missing. Oh, Captain. Just a minute. Could Ellen's key have opened Professor Gordon's cupboard? No, the individual keys only open their own locks. And the one in master control was a skeleton key for all the equipment cupboards. Well, then, that must be the reason why it was stolen. Look, a saboteur took it from master control to get into the gas storage room to plant the bomb. Bomb? Yes, look. Peter found this after the explosion. It's a transistor valve. Could well have been part of a time bomb mechanism. So this was deliberate. Well, did you think it was accidental? I did think so. Look, where were you when this happened? Over there. You were very lucky, Doctor. Yes, I was. Captain Payne, please contact Master Control. Captain Payne, please. 
Uh, Captain Payne speaking. There's an important signal just come through from London, sir. Very good. I'll be there right away. Excuse me, ma'am. The year's work here, all destroyed. I don't suppose there'll be enough money in the budget left to build this lab up again. Well, everything was to close down anyway. What? Well, this explosion was the last straw. Captain Payne feels that to carry on now would only endanger people's lives. Oh, Sir Bayer will be sorry. He hasn't got much drilling left before he reaches the X lair. Do you hear there? All members of the scientific staff are requested to attend a special meeting in Captain Payne's study in one hour's time. I repeat. Well, Sir Bayer's only got one hour left to reach the X lair. A special meeting in Captain Payne's study in one hour's time. Captain. That's all right, Mark. Good, now we're all here. Now, as some of you already know, immediately after the explosion this morning in Dr. Keir's laboratory, I sent a signal to London. I asked for permission to close down all the work here, pending a full investigation of the various accidents which have plagued the Geary over the past few months. A short while ago, I received their reply, authorizing me to stop the work. And I intend to put that into immediate effect. However, I shall not be conducting the investigation because after tomorrow I shall no longer be director here. The United Nations intends to hand the Geary over to a company which has promised to carry out the full research program. So I have no doubt that before too long, most of you will be back in your laboratories. Uh, what's the name of this company, Captain? International Metals Limited. So that explains it. at 11 o'clock tonight. I should be delighted. This is what they've been after all along, Captain. To take over a gear here so that International Metals Limited can control the world's supply of phenesium. I think you're exaggerating, Mark. But even if it were true, I don't see what I could do to stop the transfer. Unless we could prove a connection between the sabotage and the company. What do you mean, prove that the sabotage is a good company? Yes. Hmm. Well, we've got to catch him first, and time's short. What about Gerard? Well, I think he's... he's involved, all right, but he's working with an accomplice, you know. Well, who could the other one be? I don't know. I suppose it could be some buyer, it could be Gordon. Outside chance, it might be Ellen Carey. <laughs> well, it's got to be one of them, hasn't it? You still think it could be Dr. Carey? Yes, yes, I do. Well, what about the explosion? Well, I suppose that might have been an accident, in spite of Peter finding that transistor valve. Do you really believe that, Mark? No, no, of course I don't. It was sabotage, all right. You know, Captain, we've got a chance of finding the right man. We've got enough clues, if only we can sort them out. Well, whoever is responsible must be feeling pretty happy just now. So... So, it is you.